incredible glide, Spyro. I thought I'd be stuck here forever with those ugly vultures standing on my head. Those birds might look tough, but they're pretty tasty. Flame broiled with a pinch of salt. Hey everybody, Nostalgia Scott coming to you guys with part 2 of Spyro the Dragon, part of the Spyro Reignited Trilogy for the Xbox. And uh, yeah, today we'll be doing Town Square. Also remember to check out the Patreon and Discord in the description below, where you guys can choose the next Let's Plays, talk to our community, you know, suggest games for the consoles that we have access to, or if you guys have like emulation things that you want to go over, like, oh, you can play GameCube games on this, you know, here's how. And, you know, you guys can discuss that stuff or giveaways sometimes happen and things like that. So, yeah, just look forward to some cool stuff like that. So, going over the totals here, we have 200 gems. We have uh, four dragons, one egg. I, and I think there is a skill point here. Yeah, all bucks. All, all bucks. All bulls stuck. Yeah, all bucks. Yeah, they're definitely um, deer and stuff now, right? So those chickens clucking. So many chickens. Wow, also the first dragon immediately nils. Welcome to Town Square, Spyro. Begin exploring by gliding to that area with the bulls. Use the right stick to get a good look. Alright, well, thank you for the actual useful advice, even though... So, the skill point here... You actually have to go and you know smack them around. Also, I left the voice volume up. I didn't realize the voice volume would still blare those guys. So yeah, I'm gonna have to turn that down to about an eight. That way I don't go deaf. Oh, definitely didn't notice I missed the chest down there. Good thing I did, or good thing I noticed it before I went too far. Otherwise, we'd have to backtrack, and that's just tedious. Who likes backtracking? Some people do. This game actually requires no backtracking to levels, which is pretty cool. Anyways, we have Devlin. Thanks, Spyro. <laughs> I had the worst itch on the tip of my wing. Did you know that you get your longest glides by pressing the jump button at the very top of your jump? Yes. I said that before. So yeah, you actually have to make sure you stick every single bull, otherwise you're not going to get the uh, the skill point. You can't kill them either, like once you stick them in the ground, you can't kill them. Otherwise... Okay... I was holding down the charge button and the game was just like, no, how about, how about we don't do that? I know there's another one, where is he? There he is, and there's still a bull up there that we have to get to, so... Yeah... A little annoying, but I think we got everything else around here, so let's grab this dragon, which is Alvar. Hm, Spyro, do you see a man dressed in blue running around here? He's a thief, and he's stolen a dragon egg. You've got to track him down and, and get that egg. Run, run! <laughs> I'm getting a little winded. It's funny. They should have did a fat dragon. And we don't know how old he is. Maybe it's just his age. I don't know. Alright, let's grab a health here. So, to get to the egg and to the missing stuff, you actually have to glide over here. The game doesn't technically give you any advice on that, but it's there. Also, this is this egg thief used to be really easy. But there we go, we got him. Used to be able to get him before he even went through the tunnel. But like I said, they increased the difficulty of the egg thieves because... Some things in this game, including mainly Spyro 3 and, well, Spyro 2, they also up some difficulty, um, is that they took a lot of the really easy elements that made the game too short and easy and kind of, like, buffed them up a bit. So I'm just double checking to make sure I'm not missing anything before we go on. Now, I believe the Speedway is technically before the boss, so we'll do that, and then we'll check the uh, guidebook afterward to see if it was in the right order. So, that way I know whether or not to take on the boss first, or whatever. And there we go, we got the skill point. Nice. 
So for these chests, you actually have to play them three times to spin them around. No idea why, but that's all 200 gems, and the last dragon is Thor. Thank you for releasing me, Spyro. You can always check your progress by accessing the guidebook through the pause menu. He just used to say thank you for releasing me, which is kind of interesting. But that's the first level done within five minutes of recording. Not too shabby if I say so myself. Also, we're going to be at 600 gems. We will have a thousand. Speedways, unlike every other level in the game, is consistent and always have 300 gems. Also, this is the only level that isn't actually located within this little hub. Also, enemies, if you flame them again after you collect a gem, they'll give you like this orb. And if you collect enough orbs, you'll actually unlock a life, which is a cool way to do it. So there's more ways to earn lives. So to unlock the speedway, you actually have to hop on each of these platforms once. There is a dragon that tells you about it way later in the game, and I mean like, still quite a ways. But we have Sunny Flight, which I don't think has a skill point. I know the achievement here is the hardest one to get out of all the speedways, just because the, the thing you have to do is very time specific. Not like based on how fast you can do it, but like at the precise point of which you have to click the actual button. Wait, oh, I have to click that one. No, we don't actually have any more skill points to the second world, which is cool. So we got these like norks with little bomb trains that we got both. They look like they're arches and stuff like that. Also, if you notice, unlike a hero's tail, all of these give you time. Now, Spyro 2, I don't believe, give you. No. Spyro 2 give you time as well, Spyro 3 is the one that uh, doesn't give you time. It, you just have to beat it as fast as humanly possible, or I guess dragonly possible, since we're playing as a dragon, you know? I guess that would make more sense. Also, these voices of these norks are really loud. Uh, the rawr, rawr, rawr. Yeah, they sound like they're in like intense pain, but I guess you just torched them and blew up their vehicle and killed them, so... I can see them screaming out in pain. Also, if you get close enough to the water... Did not mean to actually touch the water. I meant to show you guys that uh, there is a cool, like, visual effect with the water. You can see, like, the... You know, the water start to split as Spyro flies across it. That's a pretty cool touch. But, yeah. Also... Okay, that, that was just dumb. You don't technically die here. So, if, if you fail, just go ahead, try again. There's no repercussions other than you have to sit through that loading time. Which, by the way, on Switch, I recommend, first of all, not playing this game on Switch. It is super bad, because the Switch, like, the hardware is so bad that so many good games have to be dumbed down because they weren't designed for that engine. That it's just, yeah. But, I forget what I was saying before the whole death fiasco. I don't even know. Oh yeah, I've got to listen to these guys again. Not a sound effect that I'm a huge fan of listening to, because he's super annoying. Well, thank god, they're all dead, so we don't have to listen to them anymore. Like, sheesh almighty, man. But honestly, these levels do look fantastic. And I usually sit really far away from my uh, TV, plus never have a headset in. So I never get to listen to the music or look at the levels as good as like they are now. Plus when I play on computer, my uh, laptop screen is small, so it doesn't really look that good. So I mainly play like World of Warcraft, plus I don't have a lot of memory on my, uh, or storage on my computer, not memory, memory's fine, uh, storage on my computer because World of Warcraft takes up like a majority of it. I think I only have like 120 gigs. And World of Warcraft is like 70 or something like that. It's crazy. And yeah, also if you press A, you can actually flap your wings to go upward. Which is kind of a cool touch that they have, I guess. Nothing too fancy. Nothing amazing. But it gets the job done. And once you beat the speedway, you'll fly up like this. And you'll get all the gems. And then you click quit. You don't click retry. You click quit. And then you'll get all the gems added to your total. So we should have an extra 300. Meaning that the boss level only has 100 gems. It's also the easiest boss level, but 
in the Reignited Trilogy, they actually made it so the boss can hurt you. Which is kind of cool. Also, boss levels tend to have the least amount of dragons out of the entire world. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Don't go to a boss level expecting to see a lot of ja or a lot of dragons. So we have Toasty, which is a very scary orange-looking level. Also, the clouds here. The clouds look just bad. I don't know what they did. They just look like they're poorly painted. Just, just a small critique I have. All right, so we made it. Uh, very orange. Even Spiral's kind of orange. And yeah, this is the next level, the Shepherd. He also has sheepdogs now instead of the uh, ram enemies. Now, you actually have to flend them twice. Also, their bark is really annoyingly loud. Get out of here, you stupid fiend. If you just mash the flame button, you can generally kill them before they can jump on you, though. As a kid, I didn't know that, and I thought there was like a lockout timer on like how fast you could kill them. So I kind of just like ignored them. Anyways, one dragon, 100 gems, and no skill point, I believe. Yeah, it's weird, because it's, I think, the only boss in the entire game, including the final boss, not to have a skill point. Oh my god. Oh, they're whimper when they die. That's so sad. Oh, my flame breath didn't do anything that time. Actually, no. I don't think the whimper is the one they die. I think the whimper is just a random sound effect that they sometimes produce. Come on. Why is a shepherd telling me to come on? I thought Nasty Nork made minions. Like, what I don't get are these enemies that aren't Norks. Like, did Nasty Nork create these minions or what? Are these just random innocent dudes that we're beating up because we want to, because we're an evil dragon? I do like the music here, though. The music is good. Do 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 do. Our only dragon here is Nevin. Nasty Nork has put one of his most devious henchmen in charge of the artisan world. Bring him on! I think I smell a barbecue. Be careful, Spyro. Toasty has many tricks up his sleeve. Uh, as for the tricks, I still have never figured out what they are, but we got some kind of pumpkin grim reaper. Wait a minute, that looks like a sheep. Um, he died after he hit me. Okay. Ugh, it's a sheep with weird demon spikes growing out of his back. Okay, and, and that time I didn't take damage. That's weird. It's like very inconsistent. And there we go, we beat the boss. Woohoo! Oh yeah, and the one random cutscene in the middle of a level. No reason to why there's a cutscene there. There just is. And with that, we beat another level. Super short, super easy. We took a few hits because of some weird things. I don't even know why we took damage, but we finally hit a thousand gems. Nice. Meaning we can now go to the next home world. So we'll grab some health before we go to the next home world, because the next home world is... I don't know. It's, it's interesting. I can't say it's one of my least favorite or like, one of my favorites, but it's just there. It's, it's, a good, it's a good home world. Also, they added dialogue to or voices to these guys. Wow! I see you've been busy rescuing dragons, Spyro. You may travel to the Peacekeeper's world if you like. Are you ready to go? Yes, I am. Uh, let's grab a drink of water while we uh, fly there. We're going to the Peacekeeper's home world now, which is a desert. So we have like the the grasslands, then we have the the uh, desert. Next one's like a magic mountain, and then a swamp, and then a dream world, and then the final world, which I'm not going to spoil. Also, unlike the original Spyro, there was no cut in like the transition there. You just transitioned to this world, and that was it. Also, the music here is pretty good, too. Spyro 1 definitely does have different style music than Spyro 2 and 3, that's for sure. And we have Titan. Welcome to Peacekeepers. Look how our treasure has been stolen and turned against us. Please, recover our treasure, Spyro. Collect treasure, got it. One thing I never understood about the Spyro games is why there were never any female dragons. 
In any of the three games, we have never seen a female dragon. It wasn't until... I think a hero's tail that there was a female dragon and she just ran the nursery. And other than that, I don't think there were any female dragons ever until Cinder. Like, there's, I guess, technically, uh, Ember in A Hero's Tale. She was actually supposed to be in uh, Enter the Dragonfly. Fun fact, Enter the Dragonfly had over 25 levels, which were all scrapped. Also, if you want the achievement here, you gotta, like, flame them when they're in their tents. But, um, anyways... Yeah, so Flame and Ember were actually supposed to be part of Enter the Dragonfly. There were supposed to be over 25 levels with four home worlds based off of weather. So sun, rain, snow, and I think wind was the other world. And you were supposed to fight Nasty Nork, the Sorceress, uh, Ripto, you know, Crush Gulp, all them. Uh, Bianca, Moneybags, Hunter, they were all supposed to show up in the game more often than they did. Like, if you notice, Bianca only shows up at... Shows up at, like, the very beginning of the game, and Moneybags is only in Dragonfly Dojo. That's because they were intended to be in more than just those levels. But because of the way that the game was rushed, and the two developers couldn't agree on what they wanted the game to be, it got ruined. It could have potentially been the greatest spiral game of all time, and it was supposed to run on 60 FPS. But it never did, and it just. It was really, really pathetic because it was supposed to be such a good game, yet it was ruined by, first of all, developers not agreeing. I don't know why they didn't just go with the main idea that the one guy had, which wanted to make it like a combination of the first three games, be kind of like the first, like, transition into the new uh, consoles, where, you know, we actually got some really cool content and stuff. And just, they just ruined it. Also, for these chests, you have to flame them to jump up, and yeah, that's about it. They're, they can be annoying, but they're not, like, super difficult. This is the boss level here, Dr. Shemp. That's pretty darn cool, if I say so myself. Also, we have 200 gems, 3 dragons, and an egg. We also forgot a dragon back here. Don't know why I completely just ignored him. But anyways, we'll go grab him. We have Magnus. Hey, Spyro! Sparks the Dragonfly has been doing a good job protecting you. Make sure to keep him strong by feeding him lots of butterflies. Okay, Mr. Jigglegut. I think you need to lay off the butterflies yourself, just, just saying. You're a little chunky. And it is technically getting closer to bathing suit season, so... Yeah, you may want to do that, buddy. Also, look, there's our dragon egg. And he was an idiot. He just got nuked by the power of flame breath. Also, a key. But we haven't seen a chest yet. I wonder where that could be. And we have Gunner, the final dragon here, by that purple goop. Well done, Spyro. Keep up the good work, and I know you'll fulfill your destiny. Destiny? I just want to kick some... Just toast those enemies and collect the treasure. God, he's got some scary teeth. It really makes you question, like, why Spyro ended up the way he did, you know? Like, why is Spyro such a such a simple dragon compared to his brethren? Though they didn't look like that in the original, they were just simple too. They are just designed bigger. Spyro never really got that much of a graphical upgrade. Like, yeah, he's three, he's like HD now and stuff like that, and kind of cool. But he's... All right, we'll just ignore that ever happened, okay, guys? Good. I'm glad we can all agree on that. Anyways, pretending nothing ever happened, you guys see nothing, right? Also, my controller is a little weird because I'm my Xbox facing a wall right now, so I can actually have room to record. So sometimes my controls don't work the way that they're supposed to, simply because my Xbox is in the wrong location. If you're wondering why, sometimes I play like an idiot. Or it feels like I'm doing things awkwardly. Cool. I have a hair in my mouth. Anyways, um, I think we have time to do one more level. Also, yay. In the original, it's a lot harder to make that. So let's go to Dry Canyon, which is technically level one. Obviously, oh, that's the one thing. Okay, so the flight level does show up before the boss. 
So we will do the flight level before the boss. Anyways, level 1 of this world is Dry Canyon, and you guys can guess what type of level it is just by the name of it, right? It's definitely not a Dry Canyon. Woo, 1200 gems for our collection. Noise. It's also really weird, because when I'm recording it this way, my, the, the device that records it, it's, cause I, I use Bandicam, right? I used to use OBS, but they they could create sound delay on videos and it would just make it bad. Bandicam, I can do that. Just hook up my recording hardware to my computer and open up Bandicam and record the, with the HDMI section. But one thing I've noticed is that, so there's two bars for audio, right? Secondary device and the microphone. And for whatever reason, it's not showing how much of the audio of the game I'm picking up. So I always have to keep messing with the audio just to make sure that everything I'm doing, you know, is good. And a lot of the time the settings reset themselves, like when I uh, reboot up Bandicam after not recording for a while. So it gets annoying, but I don't know why he stopped there. Also, forgot to go over the totals. We have the one dragon egg, there's four dragons, 400 gems, and... Oh, never mind, I do actually have to go back and do that uh, skill point. Duh, I thought it was the achievement. It is the achievement! A lot of the time, if you're trying to figure out what the achievements are in Spiral 1, they're tied into the, uh, the skill points. So I do need to go and do that. Also, vultures! Wait, are they buzzards? I think they're buzzards, right? I think vultures look more like hogs. I forget which bird it is, because one of them gets misinterpreted a lot where it actually looks more like a hog than anything. And there's a hare that keeps tickling my neck, and I can't find it. There we go. Sheesh. I was getting irritating. I, did I miss anything back here? I don't think I did. So, we'll go and grab our first dragon over here, which I don't think has anything important to say. We have Conan. What? Huh? Oh. Thank you for releasing me, Spyro. You're no problem, Conan. Also, you have yellow teeth, dude. You you um need to lay off the uh, the dark drinks there for a bit. All right, we got more of these. These are my least favorite thing, just because they're time consuming. Are you trying to beat me up with a bird? That's no fun. Why do I want to be beat up by a bird? Also, I like to get the dragon after I collect everything around it. You're probably because you're probably seeing me ignore the dragons for a bit. It's because I like to collect everything so the game saves. Because if you kill an enemy and then die, but don't have a checkpoint before you kill the enemy, the enemy will respawn. It's not that they'll drop gems again or anything like that. They'll just respawn, and it's just annoying. Ugh. Well, you died, sir. Sucks to be you. Sucks to suck, right? Anyways, now we can go back and get the dragon, which I believe is another old dragon, if I'm not mistaken. We have Ivor. Is that you, Spyro? Are you the young dragon I've been hearing so much about? Ever since you were a wee puff of smoke, we've known... Uh... You've known... Ah, uh, I forget. Like, and they did that in the original game, too. That isn't a new line or anything. They kept typing up Spyro to have, like, this important destiny, but then some of the dragons also didn't believe you and create more issues for you. And then, for whatever reason, Spyro's the only one that ever seems to do any kind of saving of the world and not any of the other dragons, so... Of course, because I hit that wall before... Oh, also, fun fact, I don't know if they kept it in this, but if you flame the cacti around here... Yeah, they'll shake it off. I think that's kind of a cool little feature, just saying. Super duper cool. Oh yeah, I didn't actually get these, I was like... Yeah, see, I hit myself on that spike last time. And we still got quite a few gems to go, but... More gems the merrier, since that's what uh, the Peacekeeper's guy wanted us to do. So yeah, you can actually go to the next world without beating all the levels, as long as you collected a specific amount of treasure, uh, or a specific amount of eggs, or dragons, or... Whoa! Why was that vulture over here? Now I'm gonna call him a buzzard, because they have a bald head, so... They're either... 
I, no, I think they're vultures. I think the game calls them vultures in the achievement, so... Oh, wait, no, I don't want that yet. Because there's a key over there, and we don't have the key. So there's no point of really going over there unless you want to backtrack twice. And that's just no fun whatsoever, so... In the original game, if you destroyed one of the chests down below, it would actually shoot this guy up here and kill him, so it would be weird. Also, these vultures only turn around, or only attack when they're facing you. They don't ever turn around. And my second to last dragon is Boris Johnson. Dry Canyon rewards good gliders. You are a good glider, eh, Spyro? I was born to glide. Hmm. I love how he has a cowbell. I kind of wish it would jingle, though, like when he jumped up. Because some of them do make sound effects when they teleport away. That guy, for whatever reason, doesn't. And it's kind of sad, because he has the cute little cowbell. And it's a shame that they didn't uh, do anything with it. Also, the dragon and key are actually over around this corner. Yeah, that's what the guy meant about gliding. And the you know, end area there. But anyways, this is the last dragon, Maximus. Incredible glide, Spyro. I thought I'd be stuck here forever with those ugly vultures standing on my head. Those birds might look tough, but they're pretty tasty. Flame broiled with a pinch of salt. Okay, well, they are vultures, according to the game. So I wasn't misnaming them. Might be the wrong type of bird in real life, but at least in this game, they're what I said they were. Also, I never looked at this before, but like, look at this. This is like super cool. I really wish, like, there were more levels like this, like cool crystalline caves. No idea why there's not, just isn't. It's, it's also really weird. Also, the fact that you have to backtrack all this way just to make that one jump is kind of stupid. Luckily, unlike a hero's tale, though, I can actually charge and jump, which is super useful. Now, remember the whole glide at the top of your jump thing? Yeah, you really have to do it here. It's like it's super important. Now, I know we're still missing gems because we didn't technically get to the end portal, but that's so we didn't have to backtrack even more. Or, we still have to backtrack about the same amount of time, but at least this way it makes sense why we're going back instead of just to leave the level. Doing it the other way is just silly. Yeah, yeah. Alright, now we can go across here. Oh, we got an enemy. Actually, we got two enemies over here. And you're dead, sir. Oh, I wonder what the last five gems are. Oh, yeah, right here. And there we go, we beat this level. Now normally I do my outro thingy here, but I guess I can't. Remember to leave a like on the video, comment, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, join the Discord and the Patreon in the description below. But before we actually end the episode, we're going to scare these guys into their tents. So to do that, we're going to have to... There we go, you kill one, and then the rest fall suit. There we go. There we go. And there we go, there's our skill point. So like I said, if you guys enjoyed this video, do what I said, and in the next episode, we will be going to... Dr not Dry Canyon, duh. I, I, I almost forgot that we did that level. Even though we just did it. Cliff Town! See you guys next time. Bye-bye.